Hey everyone, we're going to be looking at Spanish flamenco -y related scales, arpeggios, and whatever. The thing is, the, this concept I'm talking about goes for every style of music, I'm just applying it in a Spanish context. So, we need to understand a little bit about um, how to make the melodies, how to solo nicely, and the, the big thing for me is understanding what chord you're on, and understanding what notes work with that chord really well. Even if we know the scale, I'll be talking that this, for, for now, I'm basing it around that scale, uh, sorry, that harmony, that movement, A minor, G major, F major, E major, which is a very typical Spanish sound, Spanish movement. Um, so, first chord, we're in the key of A natural minor, or A aeolian. It's the same as C major, whichever way your brain works, you want to Think about it, how, you know, how it works for you. The idea is when I'm on A, I have my scale, but the notes of A minor arpeggio are going to be like my helpful notes to land on. We use like the one minor three and the five. We can go up to the, the minor seven. If we know those notes, pattern of scale, they're kind of like a little road map of how to get around that scale with the nice notes. So they're the ones, they're kind of like your safety zone. You can land on them and they're going to sound good. Um, so the thing that happens is when you're playing within a, the same scale, you can change the chord. So the chord then changes to G. I'm using the same fingering for the scale, but my nice notes have now shifted. So instead of using the arpeggio notes that I know in this position as A minor, I now have to think, all right, well, where's my tasty notes for my G chord that are in that same position? And then the same thing again, where's my tasty notes for my F major chord in that position? Same thing again for the E major. Now the E major is, that's where it throws it out a little bit. The first three chords are 100% within the same key. The E major throws it out by one note. The major third, that's what the note is that's making it jump out of the key a little bit. Normally within the key it would be E minor. But in the Spanish world we have major third. So that note is very important for that last chord. Whenever you're playing, no matter if you're doing that kind of thing or you're playing play this E major chord, it's important that this note is in there when you're playing it rather than the minor, because you'll get a clash if you're playing a minor third and a major third at the same time, it's just, you're going to get that weird noise, which it can work, but you, you need to know it's there so you know how to avoid it or use it in a musical context. So, let's say for instance, I'm playing this. I'm going to target the third of each chord. So if I just play the root note, there's my minor third. Then on the next chord, it's a major chord, so I have a major third. Next chord, same thing, major third. And the next chord, same thing, major third. So my movement is this. If I now approach those notes with a little bit of extra scale, maybe I'll be um, A. to the chord I'm on. You can do the same thing attacking the fifth. Same thing on the root note. That's the probably the least exciting note to use, but it works. Um, so the, the thing is, for me, there is the theory that's attached to... Um, within like the Spanish sound, a lot of people will say Phrygian. 
uh, or Phrygian uh, dominant. Uh, you'll, you'll hear about melodic minor and harmonic minor uh, modes. I used to think about that stuff and now I don't because I found it too, too much thinking and not enough cool music happening. So what I try and do is I just think over the top of this, first three chords, it's the same scale, it's just changes by one note. So therefore I have to know where this note is in every position. Because now I'm comfortable with A minor all over the neck, but now A minor plus the special note, which is right there, it's an A flat. If I know where my root notes are from this arpeggio thing, I know that's A minor, I know where A flat is because it's right behind that root note. So I can be thinking A aeolian, A natural minor, same thing. And then I get to the E, and I try and hit, make sure I hit this note because it's the major third of the E chord. So um, this is one way for making it, well, a big way to make it melodic. Follow your arpeggio notes. This takes a long time to learn, but make sure, like I always say, play over the top of the chords uh, when you're practicing scales, have a chord in the background. If you're playing A natural minor, have an A minor chord in the background. Then you play with a G in the background, and an F, and then the E. So you can, even if the song's playing a bar of each, you can play just over A minor for half an hour and get your ears in tune with those arpeggio notes, just playing even the scale um, separate notes. So if I play I'm listening even slower because now I've got my root note of A and I'm playing all of the notes of the scale along with my root note. So I get to hear the relationship of each of those notes. This is important. The more you understand the relationship between your root note and the other notes of the scale, the more you're going to have melodic direction. So let's say, for instance, like the last thing I did, playing from minor thirds, major third, major third, major third. Uh, then I said fifths, fifth, 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 fifth. What you end up doing is you start to develop a melodic um, uh, identity is not really the word I'm looking for, but you, you get a better melodic sense. So you're not necessarily going to be going, oh, I want to go from the third to the third to the third to the third. You just know it after a while that that note sounds good over the A minor. And so does that one. And so does this one. And so does that one. So you might Think about it in the beginning of going, oh, I'll go from the major third, oh, sorry, the, the minor third, then I'm going to go to the fifth, then I'll go back to the major third of this chord, and so on. Eventually, your ears will be trained, if you've you know, taken the time to listen and use your ears a lot, your ears will lead you into the direction of the nice notes. This does take a long time, and I hope it's not too complicated already. Um, but yeah, you can, for me, the theory when I learnt it, I, I was confused in the beginning, like most people, but then I didn't know how to use it, so I just tr simplify it, and now that's the way I look at the, the theory. I know that there's all these other names for modes and scales and whatever, but I prefer just to play music and not really worry about that stuff unless I'm teaching. Anyway, for instance, let's change it up and play E, oh, sorry, A minor, and the D minor, and then the E. So if I'm playing without the harmony, minor third to a minor third, I can imply the movement of the harmony. So if I play, let's think, if the rhythm is going because I'm following the harmony 
of the harmonic movement. So, that's a big one. So we can find a version of each chord in, in the same position. A minor, G7 or G major, F major, E7 or E major. And that is like a roadmap of tasty notes in that area when we're playing each chord. This takes a lot of practice to get used to and memorizing and you know training your ears and your technique for playing. But this makes a massive difference. Arpeggio notes, they are gonna help you a lot. One of the next things we've got to be really good at is our rhythm. If we're not good at rhythm, it doesn't really matter if you know all your arpeggio notes, it's gonna sound a bit boring because your rhythm's not good. Um, practicing scales like this is okay and it will get you so far, but solos don't sound like that. Solos stop and start rhythmically. So you need to train yourself for the, uh, for the tasty notes, you train your arpeggios while you're listening to the chord in the background, so your ears are getting better. But at the same time, try training your rhythm. So for instance, um, if I'm gonna write a song, and I'm gonna write it with these three chords, I know where my tasty notes are. After a while, they sink in. But then I've gotta think, all right, well, what sort of, what's the rhythm of the song? Boom, da, boom. It's not just daka 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 daka. So that is my bass rhythm. Boom, ba, da, boom, ba, da, boom, ba. So everything I play is attached to that rhythm. So now I try and think of rhythms that work, like boom, da, 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 da. I use lots of verbal ways to explain rhythm and to think of it in my head because it helps us play better. Like uh, uh, if we're doing our scales like this, it's probably the closest to the most boring rhythm we can do. So practicing scales, try doing things like... Um, I'm just not going da 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 da. I'm thinking, oh, you can steal rhythms. Listen to a solo and then just steal. It doesn't have to be a solo. Listen to a rhythm. Listen to anything. Listen to a percussionist doing something and they might go whatever. That was my attempt at bongos. So you steal the ideas and you practice playing rhythmically. Eventually, when you have the nice notes and the rhythm sorted out, and your technique is you know, supporting you, hopefully, you get much better melodic direction and much better tastiness in your playing. It's one of the differences, one of the big differences I noticed when I was playing the same scales, I had similar gear, and I was just like, why don't I sound like Stevie Ray Vaughan, or why don't I sound like Paco de Lucia? Oh, challenging. Um, and so this is, this is where it really helped. It was understanding my tasty notes and rhythm. Apply it everywhere. So, like I said uh, before, I think, eventually your ears start to help you out. Like if I'm playing this, I know instantly, okay, na, 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 na. That's the movement of the harmony, do, 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 do. That's the root notes. Um, so I've got an idea of where I can, where my tasty notes are going to be and I can kind of just bounce from one position to another and my ears will help me. If, for instance, you land on a note that's not quite right, if it's in the scale, that's great, but sometimes they still don't sound perfect because maybe it's not an arpeggio note, you can slide up or down a note within the scale and the chances are you are going to land on a nice er note. So, for instance, like we did uh, before when I'm playing third, oh, I'm going to keep this note. You know, on that last one, that sounds great. That one in the scale. That one sounds 
okay, it's still better than this one. That creates the suspended kind of vibe or it's just not working. It's um, actually gives us an augmented sort of thing going on there. So uh, what we want to do is just practice all of that and get brilliant and there we go. For me, that's it. Arpeggios and good rhythm. Um, I'm going to not go on any further because I feel like I've been babbling forever. I think it's the third time I've tried this video, technical issues, whatever. So there you go. Hopefully that's helpful. Let me know. Uh...